planets are everywhere. Astronomers have already found thousands of them. And that's just within the Milky Way. But there's something special about finding an exoplanet close to home a planet that could be a place that you could reach in a spacecraft someday in the future, not just look at it through a telescope and guess what's on the surface. And in fact, we can say that we are somewhat lucky in this regard, because our sun's closest stellar neighbor may well contain Earth-like planets and even potentially habitable conditions. So, hello, everyone, you're watching Stardust, and today we're going to look at the Proxima Centauri system. Of all the stars in the universe, of which there are countless billions, Proxima Centauri, an ordinary red dwarf, is the closest to us. But of course, not everyone agrees with this statement, because the often bright star called Alpha Centauri is considered the Sun's closest neighbor, and from a certain point of view, this is also true. Located at a distance of only 4.35 light years from us, Alpha Centauri is indeed the closest star to the Sun, but that's not the whole story. Although Alpha Centauri appears to be a single bright star to the naked eye, a closer look reveals that it is actually a system of three stars. Two of them, Alpha Centauri A and B, are about the same size as the Sun and together form a double system. Therefore, when we look at Alpha Centauri, we see the combined bright light from the two stars, but the third member of the group, separated from the other two by a considerable distance, is Proxima Centauri or as it is officially called Proxima, is relatively far away from its satellites. Therefore, at first, many astronomers doubted that this star was really part of the triple system. It orbits its neighbors in a huge orbit every 550,000 years. Nevertheless, the distance from Proxima Centauri to the solar system is estimated at about 4.24 light-years, so at the moment, of the three members of the Alpha Centauri star system, this star is rightly called the closest to us. Don't let the word close fool you. Because the distances here are truly impressive. The star is located at a distance of approximately 43,208 billion kilometers, or 268,770 astronomical units. So it will take a very, very long time to fly there, given the current state of technology. For example, the Voyager space probe, which is currently traveling at 17 kilometers per second relative to the Sun, would take almost 74,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. In this beautiful image from the Gabble Space Telescope, Proxima Centauri looks quite bright, but it is actually much smaller and dimmer than our Sun. In fact, it is so dim that it is impossible to see it with the naked eye, even though it is the closest star to us. However, sometimes its brightness can increase significantly. Red dwarfs such as Proxima Centauri are called outburst stars. This means that they can undergo unpredictable, sharp increases in brightness within minutes or even hours. It is believed that the nature of such flares is similar to solar flares, when magnetic energy accumulates in the stellar atmosphere and is suddenly released. But cooler and much smaller and dimmer red dwarfs are much more active than their larger and brighter cousins. The reason is that due to their low mass, the internal structure of red dwarfs is completely convective, and energy is transferred to the outside by the physical movement of the plasma, not through radiation. Such convective processes are usually uneven. However, sometimes a larger amount of heated plasma can reach the surface of the star. Therefore, complete convection involves greater magnetic field perturbations, and the combination of these factors leads to huge flares that periodically erupt from the surface of Proxima Centauri. Obviously, such instability does not bode well for potential life on planets around red dwarfs. But nevertheless, astronomers are finding many, many planets around these types of stars. Literally thousands of planets like Proxima Centauri. Red dwarfs are the most common type of star in the universe, and as far as we know, they almost always have planets. The fact is that most of the exoplanets discovered to date have been found around red dwarfs, and importantly, most of the Earth-like planets we know of orbit these types of stars, it is therefore not surprising that astronomers have been looking for planets around Proxima Centauri for years. For a long time, all these searches were in vain. But in 2016, astronomers from the European Southern Observatory in Chile found the first evidence of a planet orbiting Proxima. 
Moreover, this planet turned out to be rocky and located in a habitable zone. Therefore, the planet, now called Proxima Centauri b, is one of the most intriguing worlds outside the solar system. After all, it is the closest planet to us that could theoretically be similar to our home. Since the proximal star Centauri is much smaller than the Sun, its habitable zone is much closer to it. Accordingly, the planet orbited within the habitable zone. The radius of its orbit should be even smaller than the radius of Mercury's orbit around the Sun Proxima Centauri b orbits its star at a distance of just over 7 million kilometers. This is about 20 times closer than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Therefore, one year on this planet lasts only a little more than 11 Earth days. Interestingly, the mass of the Centauri b proxy is only 17% greater than that of Earth, making it one of the most Earth-like worlds ever discovered. However, the diameter of the planet is still difficult to determine, so its exact size remains unknown. The characteristics of the planet's orbit are also quite uncertain. The fact is that, when we observe from the Earth, we do not see how the proxy Centauri b obscures the starlight. Unfortunately, from our point of view, the planet does not pass in front of the disk of its star. This makes it very difficult to observe it, and it is difficult to predict what kind of orbit the planet has. Does the planet have a circular or elliptical orbit? To put it mildly, it's not easy. If the orbit is circular, then most likely planet B will be tidally blocked by the star, i.e., it will constantly face it with one side, like our moon faces the Earth. If this is the case, then this planet can hardly be called habitable, since the temperature on the day side will be too high for liquid water on the surface. And on the night side, it would be too low. However, the presence of a thick atmosphere can partially offset the temperature difference. But is there such an atmosphere? Again, it's hard to say because of the significant amount of radiation the planet receives from its star. It is very unlikely that the atmosphere would be able to stay on the surface, because powerful flares from the red dwarf would simply vaporize it. If the planet does not have a strong magnetic field, and if the proxy B was formed in its current orbit, then it was not always in the habitable zone. Indeed, in the initial stages of its evolution, the proxy star Centauri was hotter than it is today. Therefore, the planet experienced higher temperatures for millions of years. Under such circumstances, it is hard to imagine that liquid water could have survived on the surface. Therefore, it is more likely that the surface of Proxima Centauri b should be similar to Mercury or Venus than to Earth. But there are too many factors that could affect this, so no one can say for sure. The second planet around the Proxy Centauri was first discussed in 2019, when a team of astronomers discovered slight variations in the star's radial velocity probably caused by a hitherto unknown planet. In a nutshell, this technique works by picking up tiny fluctuations in the star's motion created by the gravitational pull of a planet orbiting it. The more massive the planet is relative to the star, the more noticeable its influence will be, i.e., the more it will make the star wobble. Therefore, by measuring such oscillations, Astronomers have determined that the second planet from the Red Dwarf was much larger than the Earth and orbits its star every 1907 days. At the same time, the distance over which the orbit of the probable planet passes is about one and a half times greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. At first glance, it doesn't seem too far away, but don't forget that the proxy Centauri is a Red Dwarf, smaller and colder than our Sun. So, if a proxy C exists, it must be much colder than Earth. But the evidence presented by the astronomers was not convincing enough, even for the authors of the study themselves. So they decided to verify their discovery using old Hubble telescope observations from the 90s. Indeed, the Space Telescope's archival data hinted at the existence of a planet with an orbital period of 1907 days, which coincided with the astronomers' initial data. Therefore, combining the results of all the observations, the team of astronomers concluded that the proxy B exists and should be all times more massive than our planet. Interestingly, based on the images, it turned out that the planet is somehow brighter than one would expect, given its mass. One explanation for this brightness could be, for example, a system of rings around the planet. 
In any case, the status of Proxima C is still controversial. Therefore, it is still a candidate for a planet, which can only be confirmed with the help of additional observations. Finally, astronomers managed to discover another known planet around Proxima Centauri in February 2022. This tiny planet, which has only one quarter of the mass of the Earth, orbits the star at a distance of about 4 million kilometers, i.e. 10 times closer to Proxima than Mercury is to the Sun. It turns out that the planet Proxima d is the closest planet to the star in this star system. Its full orbit lasts only five Earth days, and it is much hotter than its neighbors. This means that it was likely that water could exist on this planet in a liquid state. Interestingly, with only a quarter of the mass of Earth, Proxima d is the lightest planet ever found using the radial velocity technique. The effect of Proxima d's gravity is so small that the planet causes the star to move back and forth at only 40 centimeters per second, or almost one and a half kilometers per hour. Imagine the level of accuracy of observations that allow us to see oscillations of several kilometers per hour of objects the size of a star at a distance of tens of trillions of kilometers from us. This study was made possible by a new spectrograph with the interesting name Espresso, installed on a very large telescope in Chile, and of course, thanks to long close observations of a small red star. Espresso breaks down the incoming light into a spectrum with an impressive high resolution, and this makes it possible to detect Earth-like planets around low-mass stars. By the way, it was thanks to this instrument that it was possible to confirm that Proxima b is indeed a planet. After its discovery by another instrument in 2016, the planet remained a planet candidate for a long time until astronomers used Espresso in 2020. It was during these observations of the planet that astronomers first noticed hints of a signal from another planet, consistent with an object with a five-day orbit. But stars, especially those such as red dwarfs, can easily fool astronomers hunting for planets. When a star's boiling surface generates star spots and prominences, such activity can create radial velocity signatures that can be easily confused with a planet. And because the signal from the potential planet was so faint, astronomers had to make many observations to confirm that the signal they discovered was indeed from a planet and not the result of star activity. In general, astronomers at the European Southern Observatory hope to use the new instrument to discover many other Earth-like worlds, both near and far from home. In addition, the construction of the Very Large Telescope in the Chilean Atacama Desert is currently underway, which should play a significant role in the discovery and study of many planets around nearby stars. And by the way, James Webb has even managed to make the first direct image of an exoplanet. So, the study of extrasolar planets is just beginning, and the most interesting things are yet to come. Thank you for watching, dear friends. Your kind words and support motivate me to make more and more interesting videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all future videos, because there are many more interesting and exciting things to come. See you on our space journey.